Hey guys, so in today's video, I want to talk about iOS 18.3.2. Now, this software update has been out for nearly one week as of the filming of this video. And as always, I'd like to come back and share with you guys my experience with the software. I want to talk about some good news, some bad news, and some interesting and important news that I think everyone should consider when it comes to iOS 18.3.2, especially for those of you who have yet to update to this latest software. So first, let's talk about some of the bad news. Now, I have three issues that I want to talk about. Number one is the camera application. Now, ever since I updated to iOS 18.3 and 18.3.1, the camera on my iPhone was running just fine, and it still is, but with iOS 18.3.2, unfortunately, I do have to report that initially after updating, the camera on my iPhone actually froze once again. Now, it was blurry. This time, it wasn't just an entirely black screen. It was more of a blurry, glitched out camera. Now, I did have to quit the camera application, relaunch it, and ever since, I haven't encountered any additional camera issues on 18.3.2, but I just wanted to mention that I did encounter one minor freeze on the camera running the latest 18.3.2. Now something else I also noticed is choppiness within the photos application. And this is more here with 18.3.2, at least on my experience, when just swiping through all the photos and trying to delete and you know recover any images and things like that, choppiness and lagginess was a thing the first day or two, and then everything went back to normal. Obviously, a lot of you know file indexing is happening the first and two days after updating, and it looks like things are you know stabilizing pretty good, but I did encounter some of that you know freezing and lagginess within the Photos app as well. However, one issue that I continue to have and it just doesn't want to go away is Wi-Fi connection issues. Every time I leave the studio and come back, I have to manually go into settings and reconnect or reselect the Wi-Fi network here in the studio. Now, obviously, once you select the network and enter the password, when you leave and come back, it should automatically reconnect. That's not happening here on the latest 18.3.2. So unfortunately, I'm still having Wi-Fi issues. Let me know if you're having any of these Wi-Fi issues yourself. So now we're gonna talk about some of the good news, some of the improvements that I've noticed over the past several days. And number one, I wanna talk about cell service issues currently reported within iOS 18.3.1. With 18.3.2, I've noticed improve on cell service connection and performance here in my area. Now, cell service is always depending on the towers where you're at, you know, and things like that. But I've noticed is that after several days of using 18.3.2, the cell service performance has improved in my region with this device running the latest OS. Now, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the tower, perhaps updating or something like that, or the actual software 18.3.2 improving the connection, but I've noticed that I did have improvement on the cell service, you know, the connection stability over the past several days. So that's obviously good news. So if you were having cell service connection issues, hopefully this will also be addressed and fixed for you within the latest update. And now something else that's good news that I wanted to share with you guys is battery life. Now, when it comes to battery life, I feel like there's many users who have great battery life. According to some of the comments left on my YouTube video, it looks like a lot of you guys are having great battery life on 18.3.2, but there's also some users still struggling with battery life. Now, I have to say battery life has been great for me ever since 18.3, 18.3.1, and now 18.3.2. So in regards to battery life, I would like to say that most users are having great battery life on this software, especially on older devices. I was surprised to see those comments on my YouTube videos in regards to performance and battery life being great on 18.3.2. So now let's talk about the number one reason I believe everyone needs to update if you haven't updated just yet. So as we head on over to Apple's website about security content of iOS 18.3.2 and iPadOS 18.3.2, you see here we have one WebKit issue being addressed here. Now this is for all my subscribers out there who have yet to update to iOS 18.3.2. Listen to this. So maliciously crafted web content may be able to break out of web content sandbox. This is a supplementary fix for an attack that was blocked in iOS 17.2. Now, Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals on versions of iOS before iOS 17.2. Okay, so why should you care and what does this mean if you don't update? Well, keep in mind that Web Content Sandbox is a secure element within the browser that will help keep your personal data private and secure. Now, if you do not update, your personal data could be compromised. We're talking login information, credit card information, any information within the browser if your device is targeted with this specific attack 
that data could be compromised. So with that alone, I would recommend everyone to update to iOS 18.3.2 to protect your personal data. As Apple mentions, this specific exploit has been actually active in the wild. So there you guys have it, iOS 18.3.2, some of the good news, some of the bad news, and why everyone should update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found the information helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.